Chess.com is here with Thomas Brody Sangster, who played U.S. champion Benny Watts in The Queen's Gambit, now Netflix's most watched scripted miniseries of all time. Thank you, Thomas, for taking the time to talk with me and all of the Chess.com users. Thank you. Um, I've read that you learned how to play drums for love, actually, and you learned how to play guitar with your left hand to play Paul McCartney. Uh, this role, though, you had already played a previous character that was in the chess community. This was kind of like your second time playing a chess correct character. Did that make it a little bit easier to step into our subculture? Um, I mean, somewhat, yeah. I mean, the, the, the other thing I did was, I mean, I was playing um, a, a quite talented chess player, but it was more about um, World War II resistance and um, uh, it, was, it was quite a kind of uh, a, a side part of it. Um, and it was a kind of hunt between me and a, and a big Nazi baddie that was kind of coming after me. So there was a kind of crossover between that and the chessboard. And this was much more chess focused. I see. What, what uh, these three disciplines though, what is more difficult to make look convincing on camera? Drums, guitar with your left hand or chess? Uh, um, It's, that's a hard one. I mean, you, you, you just want to do the best that you can do to the ability because also, you know, you're, that's why I love talking to you because, you know, that you, when, you, when you're pretending to be someone that is supposedly very good at something, the main person that you're thinking of is people who are actually very good at it. And you know that they're, the, they're, they're going to be the ones that pick you apart the most. So whether you're a drummer or a left-handed guitarist or, um, you know, big, big, big chess player, um, you're going to be very, very critical. So that, that's your main kind of audience that you're going for. Uh, drums, you literally have to hit them. So if you aren't in time, it doesn't look right. So you have to be perfect. Um, with chess, it was more about the finesse and being able to kind of just look confident moving chess pieces around the board. Um, in terms of actually learning um, openings or... Uh, you know, really understanding the games in which you're playing and, and, and the reason for taking each piece is, was kind of not quite as important. Um, and I suppose fingers on a, on a fretboard are important, but less obvious than drumming. So I'd say drumming. I'd say drumming, probably. Well, you're exactly right. It's very hard to please any subculture when a movie's made about it. But I don't know if you know this. Uh, this series has been heaped with praise from inside the chess community for accuracy and the feel of being at a tournament. So you deserve a lot of credit for that. Um, there's been a lot of movies that have been made about chess during your lifetime. Some of them have even been big Hollywood releases, but nothing has done what the Queen's Gambit has done to grow chess. I mean, it's hard to even buy a chess set. They're all sold out. Our website traffic is getting five times the normal number of users. So my question is why the Queen's Gambit? Why do you think this was different than all the other chess movies and series? To be honest, I don't really know. Um, I don't. Um, all, all I do know is that um, the people who made this show um, were all phenomenally talented and all very willing and wanting of creativity, of wanting to tell a story and wanting to do it right and do it justice. And although it's very, very chess focused, um, that was a very, very important thing to get right. It was also just as important to make sure that it came across as a real story, as it, uh, you you are watching human beings, and you are, and then there's then there's also getting it period correct, and that you know. So everyone that came together to make this project did their utmost to make it as realistic and as well. Even though it's actually heightened, you know, it's a very stylized piece as well. I mean, so it's not super realistic, but it's it taps into a sense of reality that I think is key to making something successful. People only enjoy watching stuff if they can relate to it or if they can kind of somewhat understand it. So uh, making a movie or, or, or a show requires a huge collaboration of a lot of people and, and, and bringing those people together so that they all work in unity is very, very key. And uh, that's what we experienced on set. And the fact that it translated to film is kind of no surprise. The surprise is that it did very, very well and people seem to love it. I knew that it was going to be a good, a good piece, but I thought it would be in a very kind of cliquey, um, you know, small world of an audience. Um, I didn't realize it would have the reach that it does. But I think the reason that it does that is because it's just done, it's just done well. <laughs> 
Makes sense. Um, and in a previous interview, I've heard you praise the hyper-realism that was assisted by some of the chess consultants. I've interviewed Bruce Pandolfini about it. Um, can you point to one or two things that, that he specifically taught you that helped you, uh, you know, become Benny Watts as a chess player? Well, we, we, we played several times just back and forth and, um, he, he, he I, I would just take pieces and then we go, no, 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 that, that was, that was rubbish. That was rubbish. Do it again. And I do it again. And he go, oh, that was it. That was it. I was like, I, I didn't really see the difference. And he was like, do it again. And then I did it again. He said, no, 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 that was rubbish. Do, do it again. Do it again. Do it. And then we just take pieces over and over. And you just, he said, you know, get used to the weight of the pieces in your hands because you're playing someone that has moved these pieces around for years and years and years and studied and studied and studied and, and it kind of probably has a relationship with each piece. You know, you know, you have a relationship with your rooks or you, you have a favoritism of your bishops or you, you know, which pieces do you like the most? And so he kind of brought, uh, although I wasn't really learning really how to play chess, I was learning the, what a chess player may fall in love with about the game. And he that was, I think that was quite clever because there was nowhere near enough time to actually really truly understand the purpose of every move and, and, and what it all meant. And, you know, that takes years and years and years of understanding and playing. So what he did is like kind of try to teach us how to fall in love with the game and how to look like you know exactly what you're doing. Um, and so with that, there's um, an element of technique, but then there's also an element of flair. Um, and they were quite good. All, all of the chess team were quite good at uh, working with us to try and create individual flares of how we might take pieces, how how we might hit the clock. Um, you yeah, like Beth knocks over other people's kings, which is just outrageous. Um, yeah. But that's her little thing, and um, that adds to it. Um, that adds to her own little techniques. So every they were very good at like trying to figure out everyone's little own way of playing. So I'm curious, did you? either by osmosis or intentionally become a slightly better player? Did you play some fun games off the set? Anything like yeah, that? Yeah, no, no, I did. And I even learned a couple of openings, which are completely gone now. Um, <laughs> but it, at the moment, yeah, we were, um, we were playing with some, um, some great players and we were very much invested in that world. And uh, I was excited by it. I, uh, I loved it. I, I saw it as, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful game that's been played for hundreds and hundreds of years and, um, is kind of infinitely complicated and the the knowledge that you have to understand and the memory of each game that's been played in the past and then kind of put that into reflection of what you need to do in front of your board and it's just moving bits of wood around a board that's all it is but it's it I, I, I learned the beauty of it I, that's what I would say that's great to hear um, and there's a scene where you uh, what we call a blindfolded game in a car with Beth it doesn't literally mean blindfolded; it just means without the use of a chess set. Mm. But uh, this is a skill that comes to all chess players without ever intentionally trying to do it. It's a bit like taking the tube every day, and you just at some point you just know the system of London. It just happens. Um, so I'm curious: were you around a chess enough throughout the months of filming where you can kind of close your eyes and see a chess board? And, and if I say pawn to king four, you can visualize what that looks like. Did you have enough chess? in you to be able to do that no okay no in fact those lines are some of the hardest lines to learn because it was just it to me it was like code um and if you got one wrong it that the, the whole thing didn't make sense so it had to be spot on perfect um so it was a very hard thing to learn i just learned them as lines uh i was not visualizing them as a uh on a chessboard um at all no i, I was completely incapable of doing that i'm afraid that's all right. It takes years for most of us. So um, in this series, fashion is kind of like its own character. And you were, I don't know, um, maybe like an Indiana Jones, but I want to ask about the knife. Whose idea was it to add the knife to your wardrobe? It was Scott's. And, you know, it never comes out. It stays sheathed the whole time. I don't, um, it's a weird one. It's a strange one, but I think it's just his own, like, um, just his weird little defensive thing. It's, a, it's another prop that he uses to kind of unsettle people and, and to make people ask questions. Uh, I mean, that, that character, he doesn't fit the archetype chess player. And I think he does that intentionally to kind of, it's probably a tactic. I, th I think it's a, a, a tactic to unsettle his opponent. The fact he's just bizarre looking, strange looking, and he carries a knife. I mean, why would you need a knife? 
Um, and the fact he never uses it, he never peels an orange, he never does anything with it. It's, uh, it might not even be real. I don't really know. I'm going to ask you a bit of an outlandish theory that I had when I, my first viewing of the series, um, right before you played the big game against Beth in Ohio at the U S championship, you got uh, your two characters play a series of blitz chess or speed chess matches and you win all of them, almost like you're hustling her. You're taking her $5 every time. Mm. I'm just wondering though, in like Washington square, New York city, uh, sometimes hustlers, they do the typical hustle. They lose a bunch of games until they raise the stakes. I'm just wondering, I don't know if Beth's character was sophisticated enough, but could she have lost those games to you on purpose to be able to beat you the next day in the event where it really mattered? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, it's a good point. Uh, I don't think she'd ever heard of speed chess or blitz chess. Uh, and I think I basically hustled her knowing that she, I think it was also mainly to, to kind of slightly unsettle her for the next day when we we're actually playing the real game. Um, so by that point, I'd already beaten her um, 10 times or something. So um, I think it was more to kind of see how she played and to slightly unsettle her. Um, I don't think she lost on purpose. Uh, I've been there before. I don't think she likes losing. Um, I mean, I mean, actually, most chess players I've met during this whole thing uh, despise losing. Uh, it really gets to them, which I found quite... I mean, anyone that competes in anything, I think, just hates losing. It's very visceral. Um, one more idea. This was not my idea, uh, and this has nothing to do with your character, but is there any chance that Cleo is a KGB agent? Because uh, that's actually, if you read anything about Cold War era chess, KGB agents were absolutely at tournaments. So I'm just curious if that could be wow. an idea as well. That's another good good spot. I have no idea. That's a good, oh, oh I like that. I'm going to say yes, because I like that as a, as a, sto a sub-storyline. I'm going to ask you a question about your subculture that I know very little about. But um, in the chess world, when two chess players meet for the first time, we always know each other's rating or maybe even their title in chess. And so it's a very hierarchical game. You can almost never be equals as somebody because I know your rating and you know mine. Is it like that in the acting world? I'm guessing you don't bump into people and you know exactly how many BAFTAs they've won or something. But um, is there any sort of hierarchy like that in your world? No, well, there probably is. Um, it's, I mean, there's ego. There's lots of ego. Um, I don't really care about that too much. Uh, I, I, I also don't get that starstruck over people. I, I, I only judge people on whether they're a nice person, and then, and then whether they're talented, and whether I can, you know, work with them and bounce off of them and have fun and play in a scene. Um, to me, there is no. Um, there isn't really a hierarchy. I mean, you get, you know, when you, when you join a job, you know, there's the star and then on the call sheet, you've got number one, two, three, four, five. Six. So you're, you're number eight and they're number one. But I mean, that's it. And it's, it's, it's a bit of a joke, really. Um, it depends on how much of a, an arse they are. But uh, most people actually aren't. Uh, most people are very nice people. Um, actors are perhaps a little insecure. But... Uh, and, uh, tend to not be assholes. They tend to be quite nice people, I think, and they just want to um, play and experience and get. And they're, they're quite excited to get to work with someone new. I mean, that's how I feel, and that's how my most most of my experience with others is that um, if you've watched other actors or if you know other actors, um, you're more excited to work with them because you get to see how you react with them in a scene. It's uh, it's more of an exciting thing than a a one-upmanship. There is no way of kind of winning at acting. That's good to hear. Uh, in another interview, you said that as a boy, <clears throat> you played drafts or we call it checkers. That game is very complex. Is it complex enough where a series like this could be made out of drafts or is chess just got that next level of complexity that, that makes this series what it was? I think it's also got more character to it though as well. I mean, that there are literally different characters on a chessboard. Um, I just think it's a little bit more of an interesting game. Uh, it's visually just the pieces are more interesting as well. Um, it's, it's a bit more famous. Uh, I don't know. I mean, quite possibly you can make a movie about anything um, as long as it's well written and well acted, uh, well shot. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much what it's about. So yeah, I would say so. Fantastic. I'm just going to ask you one more question. It's something I've wanted to know. Hopefully the chess.com users do too. If we had a chess tournament with all of the actors, not counting any of the professional chess consultants like Bruce, 
who would win that chess tournament? Now, I never played him, but apparently Jacob, um, I can't remember his second name now, um, Jacob, who plays um, photographer guy, uh, I can't remember his character name either, bloody hell. Um, apparently he's quite good. Um, yeah, I never played him, but apparently he's actually bloody good. So I would say him. Fantastic. Maybe we'll have to organize that someday. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's hard for me to express how much you've done for the chess community. It's been awesome to see. Um, I That's wish great. you well in your career. And, and... I can hear that. I can hear that. Yeah. Thank you, Thomas Brody Sangster for spending some time with us. Thank you very much.